Oh. Welcome to another episode. David's back. David's back from his travels abroad. He shook many hands and kissed many babies. Is that the saying? That's what they say, right? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a good one. Yeah. So how's it, how's it been going? It's been living the dream, I guess, as well as it can be in this world that we're living in today. I'm surprised you traveled. I heard it's an extensive route to be able to do that nowadays. I know. Yeah. It was, um, it, it was difficult to get over to the Balkans. Yeah. It was, uh, I've, I've been planning to go since about April and, um, uh, the flights were costly and, and then, many flights were cancelled and and then the uh you know it was it was terrible so um yeah lockdowns and things and uh but yeah eventually yeah things have been smoothing themselves out so yeah it's 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 going good i know really. southwest slowly airlines slowly getting back to normal southwest airlines was trending because they canceled like a thousand flights in a day or something like that over like the mandate thing and just i guess just right. unruly passengers and i'm like isn't that the airplanes that went missing they never found those people like they're just an airplane out there that they just lost and i'm like yeah. man yeah. imagine being on an airplane and then it just go missing and then you're stuck on an island or something like that you have to build it up from the ground like yeah I like lost yeah, yeah the uh yeah it was that was a great tv show that was there was a guy on an airplane that took a picture of the big guy from Lost and was like, I think my plane's in trouble. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, that would be the scariest thing to be going down in a plane accident. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to love that that TV show, Lost. That was uh, that was a bit like Twin Peaks. You know, it's um, one of the only um, I don't know if you remember Twin Peaks. I haven't seen Lost or Twin Peaks. Oh, you've, you've never seen it, right? You've got to get the box sets. And you've got, well, look, you've got to if I want to travel, I'm not going to watch a show based in plane crashes. Like, even when a movie has it, I just, like, I'm walking out of the movie theater at that point. Like, I can't stand that. Yeah, yeah it was good. It was, it was, it was all about this uh, plane crashes on this, like, weird island. And um, took them six, six series to, to work out what was going on. And um, loads of them died. But uh, some of them come back to life. And yeah, but, but it was great. It was uh, really good. Have you noticed the shift in TV? And I, this kind of relates a little bit to like, for instance, like the Freemason thing. Like, do you notice the secret stuff that's going on now? Like everything has like a secret plot line or twist to it. Like there's that one that everyone's raving about called Squid Games. And it sounds like um, a complete mind bender. Like the guy who made the Black Mirror TV show, he stopped yeah. making the show yeah. because the world had gotten too insane where it was mm -hmm. difficult to create episodes because it was a lot like the show he was creating. And I'm like, do you notice the secretivity or these types of ideas in movies now that are kind of like a mind bender? Like, I think the, the one that paved the way was like Inception. Inception yeah. had you like, what? And then like everything now happens to do with time. Everything happens to do with some type of mind bending reality where I'm like, are we going back to like, I don't even know, like some type of like secret society style stuff. It's pretty insane. Yeah. That's all really fashionable, isn't it? Yeah. The, the symbols and all the uh, the weird stuff and secret stuff and yeah yeah it's a bit it's a bit like go, going back to Twin Peaks I mean that was really for me the the uh, the big changer the big TV show that changed um, television really you know and um, uh, that that had the Black Lodge and there was all kinds of weird stuff going on and and um, uh, yeah time stuff and uh mystery and um yeah lo lots of weird stuff symbols magic stuff yeah well it's just yeah. secret stuff it's like then. um what do you call it like when you have a black card for a restaurant and they're like oh you're a black card member you get to sit in the back so i'm like that's what everyone wants they just want that like status that everyone has but they want that extra secret part to it where you feel like you're kind of excluded from the rest of the people you get this secret backdoor entrance with this secret entree and these secret meals and all these type of things i'm like i get it that's appealing as hell if you're able to walk in somewhere a person kisses your hand and then you walk into a back room and then never to be seen from again until you're done with your meal and then you come back out everyone's like where'd you go you're like i went up to the attic you're like the attic this restaurant this is an olive garden where'd you get an attic and it's like oh it doesn't matter because you have that exclusivity to be able to go into this back room and experience this whole other thing that not a lot of people see and i think that's kind of like maybe that started with the trend of secret uh i guess food orders or secret menu items but mm. it's always been ingrained in society like if we look at like for instance like joining a club or joining you know freemasonry for instance that's a secret thing and mm. it's different from everybody else like we talked about on your first episode of fraternity 
that is kind of what that is, but it's a more like just a code of like people that have a different level or different kind of understanding or different experience than everyone else. And I'm like, I think that's what everybody wants. That's why people pay for first class. That's why people want this way of feeling a little bit above or a little bit different than the norm, but everyone doesn't want to feel excluded. That's the weird part to it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's all about the, um, uh, the, uh, the exclusivity of, uh, of uh, these clubs and um, yeah, these kind of Illuminati things and um, Sonic pseudo Masonic clubs. And uh, you know, it's all, it's all about, you know, you remember, and you can get in there and, and all these secrets can be revealed. And yeah. Why'd well, yeah, you bring up the Illuminati? Thing. You think there's an Illuminati? Come on. That's like my heart. That's my bread and butter. Illuminati. Right there. Yeah, there, yes. there is. Okay. There, there is an Illuminati. Let's, it's true. Let's, yeah. let's go down that rabbit hole. What, what exactly <clears throat> yeah. is the Illuminati? Because before you say anything, I want to, my vision of the Illuminati, for instance, that people are like, Robbie, you're nuts. I'm like, I just think it means you have enough, like, money to get a seat at the table you know what i mean i don't think it's that's like it. yeah yeah it's, that's what i okay so but, but what how do you know there's an illuminati because i'm over here just speculating and people are just like you're a conspiracy and i'm like i don't think so man i mean come on if you have enough money you want to feel like you're above people that's why you have servants that's why you have all these types of things if you tell me i can walk into a restaurant i get to knock on a wall three times and spin a painting or spin the drywall or pick up a fork and an open bookcase comes out you bet mm. your ass I'm going to learn or do whatever I possibly can to be in that exclusive group. Mm. That's it. That's it. Well, well, the Illuminati was um, originally in the 18th century. It was uh, like a pseudo Masonic rite that was in Bavaria. And um, it was um, designed to uh, illuminate its brethren in secret knowledge, you know, um, kind of part masonry, part kind of... Um, you know, bit of science, bit of uh, enlightenment going on there, and then that that ended with the French Revolution. Uh, so, so that's the real true history bit. But more recently, I think the name, just the name Illuminati, because it is a pretty cool name, the Illuminati. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing about it really. It's just a cool name, and uh, people have um, somewhere on the line of have, have, have grabbed hold of that and created a new Illuminati and they recruit people on the internet and they give people fancy certificates and things and, and uh, a book. Uh, the book, the book is, uh, I was, I was reading the book actually, I got uh, a free copy of it and it was, I was, I was reading it and, and, it, and it's all about this. Um, they reckon they've got the headquarters on some little Island in the Atlantic somewhere. Um, and this is where they have the secret meetings and uh, there's different levels of Illuminati. And they've infiltrated, uh, you know, the the politicians and and the celebrities and, and things like that. And uh, it's a great it's a great read, you know. It's I hope it's you're not I hope you're not fucking with me, dude, because you don't know how many times I've said this and people have looked at me like I'm nuts. And I'm like, I don't think it's that <laughs> nuts though. Like, I mean, there's mysterious stuff that happens all the time. I'm not talking about like Bermuda Triangles, like mysterious. I'm just talking about like a bunch of people that want to feel better than other people, and they have elite status in so many ways. I don't know if it's going to be so big as running the whole world. Maybe that's the deep end of it. But I mean, mm -hmm. secret club members secret whatever styles and all these types of things these are very appealing to a lot of people they're appealing to me i mean nobody knew about the epstein stuff until the epstein stuff came out now how deep do these horrors go i don't know but that idea that like the illuminati i don't think it's this type of like it's just very weird because everyone wants to relate it to politics and it might have a play in politics or it might have a more obvious advantage or type of visual optics in politics but i don't i think it's just Maybe it's science, maybe it's research, maybe it's swaying opinions or putting whatever you want onto the media. I mean, there's always that picture you see of one person and he's holding a string and it's attached to all these news reporters' heads. And it's like he can change it and move it to di the direction he wants to go. Well, I mean, that would explain a lot of why when I'm looking at CNN or Fox at the same exact time, right side by side, they're talking about the exact same topics, but they're spinning it in different ways. It's like the same way That's to right. get the message across, but an easier way is just to spin it and have – get both sides let's say one person doesn't like cnn well fox looks appealing because they're saying the same thing just in a different 
play. And I'm like, maybe it's That's that. Right. Or maybe it's like when I go to a water park and they're like, front of the line, sir, you got a wristband. That could be it too. I don't know. But there's a lot of unexplainable stuff where I start to look at people with power, for instance, like um, the most common I could give you is Scientology. So through talking with a lot of ex-Scientology people and people who expose Scientology, a lot of their strategies is government-based strategies, which is trying to deflame your character and make everyone think that you're crazy so no one will listen to the real words that you're saying because you found out a secret. Now, this is a method that can be used in the Illuminati-style thing. If you go against the norm or you go against the group, you're not invited to the group, and they make you a cast out. They make you look insane. Now, how far does their power go, though? Because then we start looking at people like Alex Jones, even though he got some things wrong. He has gotten a lot right, but nobody's going to listen to the things he got right because he's already been ruined in the eyes of the media. And there's already a perpetual word out there where there's not even a point in trying to kill the guy if he is right because nobody's going to listen to him anyway. And that's what I start getting a little bit conspiratorial in is because I look at it like – Damn it, we're all children, and this thing is like a chess game, and we're like sitting up at the table like, I want to move this one. You're like, that's your queen. You never want to expose your queen. It's like, does it matter? It's a pretty one, and then we just move the piece up on the board, and next you know, done. Mm, yeah. Well, this is it. It's um, <laughs> I, think, I think the world's gone crazy myself. It's yes. gone. Um, I've do you, gone do you, crazy. Do you, do you think, yeah, do you think the world has gone downhill? over the past few years you know um do you think there's um things that have um you know like a things have had a knock-on effect and and think life lifestyle is going downhill do you think do you, do you get that feeling I, th th things are going worse i don't i don't know I, I, it's definitely going worse, but I don't know if it's the times, but I think if this is an outside influence that somehow snuck its way in. Um, I've, mm -hmm. I've studied a lot about the CCP, the Chinese government, and a lot of outside influences when it comes to Russian troll farms and, you know, types, oh, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. types yeah, yeah. of things to bring up animosity where there's an old interview I played on this podcast already called it's um, episode 938. Um, it's called Father of the Year, but there's a uh, ex KGB agent who talked about a 20 year process of bringing up animosity within a nation to destroy it from the inside, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of what he talked about. And the, the video came out in 1984, so you oh, start yeah, yeah. Yeah. you start looking at that 20 almost 30 years now where he talked about a 20 year process of this animosity that gets built up to where you start decentralizing and destroying your whole entire country because you stop loving it and that's kind of what's happening in the states in a lot of ways and now we're starting to see that a little bit in the uk you know with people oh, throwing yeah. apples or whatever at their politician and you start to look at this concept of like Maybe this is an outside influence, or maybe someone found a way to make their life easier by cutting corners or messing up a system or rigging it in a certain way, which leads back to the Illuminati thing, which is why all these people are suffering is because this these people that are having an easier life, they don't care about your happiness because they don't know you. I don't if I if I would have just saw your Twitter page before the very first time we talked and I never got to know who you are, you know, know that you're a father. I, I wouldn't have cared if you would have whatever, if I would have hurt you by making my life easier. But that's the concept of communication and connection. And you start to notice these types of things. And then people just go, that's crazy. That can't happen like that. I'm like, but that's happened for ages. It's not like this is anything new. Everyone does this. And this has happened for thousands of years. Yeah, I, I think since 9-11, um, um, definitely things have have gotten more difficult, become more difficult for people, you know, for travel and things like that, obviously. And, you know, um, uh, and then and then we had the banking crisis, um, what, 2008, something like that. And then obviously more recently, you know, um, we've we've just had this complete erosion of, of uh, the middle class in, in, in both we're getting political now but in both the the us and the uk you know and um uh you, you know there's been the kind of winding down of industry um as well and uh jobs uh, seem to be just disintegrating you know and and now we've got the covid thing um you know it's it's all very kind of um you know just seems to be going oof, you know you yeah. know like that to me and and i think i think people start to look 
at um, these secret societies and, 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 you know, they want someone to blame. So this is where you get all the conspiracy stuff. And, and um, you know, um, obviously, you know, we've had the, the, there's a lot of COVID stuff. We're COVID. high. That's what it is. We're high. Because here's my rationale for this. When I smoked weed, like through my high school years or whatever, and I would get high, I would find myself in situations I shouldn't be in. Um, that could be sketchy situations, sure, but more like I wasn't supposed to witness what just happened. Like I would, I, I would be, in, I would be walking down the street, and then I remember a girl getting out of her house and just screaming at her boyfriend and throwing stuff, and they're fighting in the middle of the street, and it's just me there, and it's the middle of the night. I should not have been out there, and I probably wouldn't have been if I wasn't high. And I was in the middle of the street, like one o'clock in the morning. So I think I'm just watching this happen. The guy looks over and goes, fuck you looking at? And I'm high as shit. Maybe that's just a wrong situation that I was put in. But you start to notice things like more detail, for instance, when you're high. And I think this is what happened mm -hmm. is, is that everyone in the world today is trying to like with not just with the amount of exposure that goes on, but everyone's trying to find an answer to this isn't their fault. This isn't them. This is something else. And they start looking at like the odd, odd, like if you look at a building, for instance, a building from like the 19th century, you look at the stone and the moss that goes up the side of the stone. You're like, it's beautiful. But if you really examine it in crucial detail, you'll start to notice its flaws. This is what everyone's starting to do now. They're noticing flaws and they're trying to find someone to blame. And this is why we see all the stuff about secret societies come out like George Bush's father stealing Geronimo's head when he was in the um, Skull and Bones Society. You're like, what the hell is that? You start to I see. I've never heard that one. <laughs> Yeah, well, is that true? It, yeah, um, <laughs> but you start to notice these types of things. And I think that's what happened with Bohemian Grove was everyone's like, what is going on? It's like now you're kind of boiling the layers back and you're getting to the core of the onion where you're noticing these things that just worked in the backdrop for so long that might not have the impact into your life as you think they do. But you're going to blame them as this because now you have some a straw man to burn literally. And metaphorically, literally, as in, in Bohemian Grove, all those politicians that were burning a straw man and wearing capes and cloaks and shit and, and sacrificing this uh, statue to an uh, – sacrificing this burning wood effigy to a statue of Al uh, Moloch, the Al God. Now, that's some scary shit. But I think that's mm -hmm. just – that. I don't think it's what people thought it was. It led to a QAnon movement. I was like, I think every little issue that's going on is we're starting <clears throat> to really, really – scrub through the layers and like just find everything like this all right well here's one part of the rope there has to be more and then you keep going down the rabbit hole and you're picking up things that might necessarily not link to the issue that you're in and that's when you start i guarantee you in a year from now freemasons i'm calling it here are going to be on the chopping block there's going to be people that are going to be trying to expose the shit out of them because they think you're doing some type of dark magic necessarily oh, yeah. you might not be doing that but th people just I, even when I say, you know what Freemasons are, people go, some weird fucking they, – they don't know unless you're in it. And I think mm. that's going to cause them to be like, why don't we know what's going on in there? Why isn't this open information to the public? And they'll come at you with pitchforks and torches like they've done throughout history. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, they're doing that now. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of, um, you know, reports and articles. And I mean, I, I get I get hit by messages all the time on, on social media about masonry and and uh, magic and uh you know people link it to satanism and and um yeah all, all kinds of stuff you know and um i i, I blocked so many people I, I, I was talking to a guy called dr robert lomas who was also a freemason uh, and he's also a writer an author uh and he i was i was saying you know is it is it me is it is it just me is oh no i get tons of messages like that anyway you know i get i get i get loads as well you know and it's just one of those things. I think people don't understand it. They're looking for, um, as you say, they're looking for someone to blame. They're looking for someone to uh, to expose. Um, going, going back to Bohemian uh, Grove, um, wasn't that what Alex Jones was famous for originally? Didn't he sneak in and, and film it? Yeah, well, he, I mean, he's a, he's famous for a lot of stuff, but that was his. Yeah, he filmed it, and nobody knew that was going on. Even when I talked to people, yeah. I'm surprised yeah. you know that what was that his is. original thing, wasn't it? That was one of his early um, kind of exposures, you know, and and um, he got a lot of mileage from that, didn't he? I, I believe. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm surprised you know what that is. A lot of people from the UK have no clue what that is. And I'm like, I don't know if this is I, obviously we, we all have information on everybody's, you know, locations or countries. America's a little bit more exposed than everybody else. But now we're starting to see that clock turn a little bit. I mean, now everywhere on our news down here, besides the missing influencer, is we're seeing Brexit or not Brexit stuff. We're seeing UK stuff. We're seeing, you know, you, what you guys are doing over there. I'm like, why are we seeing this over here? And it's like now I'm starting to get the view of how every other country has seen america we've always been the headline and i think it's because yeah. we've exposed a lot of stuff but i don't know if people are in a state of like lull right now where they're kind of like i'm kind of tired of you know trying to dispute or fight with my country and there's bigger issues like afghanistan or other things that are going on and i'm like mm -hmm. it's I like the secret messaging stuff. I like it's like the little Annie decoder pin. People used to listen to the radio and fucking twist it around and try and get the secret message. I'm like, I like trying yeah. to find out the mysteries of things. But like, I think <clears throat> it's not how it used to be. And I think people are treating it how it used to be. Not like necessarily people involved in it, but just people that are coming from an outside perspective. Now, I've always joked that the Freemasonry was a, a, a was like a cult thing. But I knew realistically it's more of a fraternity of brothers. A lot of the people in our fire department are involved in there. It's more about just being in a secret group like bowling night, for instance. But people want to look at it like they're summoning demons or they're summoning spells or they're doing some type of thing that's causing me to lose money out of my bank account. I'm like, no, those are called bills. And that's the real creepy dark stuff that we need to pay attention to is how much they're able to raise the gas price to 319 when it used to be 285 or something like that. And everyone stirred up something for a day or two. And then what? Now we're just OK with paying it. We just oh, we don't have any effect to this. You start to realize like you let the power shift out of the people's hands. And that's kind of where we start getting into the dark realms and territories where we enter Illuminati style things, maybe not shrouded yeah. cloaked people, but more like a government that has a totality of power, much like we look at the China regime or the North Korean regime. Well, that's it. The what what people forget is is the power of the corporations as well. You know, um, they, they, they have the politicians in the pocket. And it's the same with the UK, um, where you know they they're throwing money at the, at the politicians, uh, but they want something back in return. So really, it's it's all these kind of corporations, uh, you know, these billionaire um, guys at the top that run these corporations that that, that want to get off paying the taxes and and uh, want want special deals, and uh, obviously groups like freemasons whatever you know the odd fellows whatever um they're they're just kind of scapegoats if you like you know oh oh, oh, oh yeah it's them it's them dodgy freemasons that that are that are doing it it's the wealth um, class people you'll s truly start to see change happen when you start seeing the people that used to be living in mansions starting to downsize their homes and pay more money this idea of tax the rich isn't bad but it was coming from the wrong mouth it was coming from the wrong person that was wearing a dress at a thing aoc now, despite how people feel about her, whatever, I don't feel too, I mean, I don't really like her that much, but it's coming out of the wrong funnel. You need people, more people, you need a group of people to be able to do these style of things. This is why it was so hard to get mm -hmm. to some of these movements, some of these movements talking about like Black Lives Matter, or all these types of things. The guy made 4.3 something billion dollars off of that protest movement. The guy lives in a mansion, the starter of that. You start realizing it's like defund the police because everyone's got a, a weird optics of how the police are. I know plenty of good cops. I've had a gun waved in my face too. But you look at the concept of what – we don't have a really good like actual through and through coded – really rise of people it's always groups and groups and groups and i'm like where's the overall consumption of people when you start realizing that people are getting away with fucking you in the ass like i i'm sorry to use the language in that terms but i didn't think this topic was going to go this way either i thought we we're going to talk about mysterious <laughs> shit but it, it upsets me like the politics stuff the reason why i'm so consumed in it is because i don't i don't let it upset me where it ruins my life. I still go live my life. But I like talking yeah. about this because yeah. you start really using an observational perspective. And especially for yourself, for instance, being involved in the Freemasonry, you can see the weird kind of group cult shit that goes on in just the world's politics where you're like, that's really fucking like weird that that is going on that way. Why are people acting that to that? You start to connect the dots a little bit. 
and it's just so crazy because it's the first time I think a lot of people are aware to it. Because, like I said, it's like you're being stoned. You're examining the chalk and the, or the the chip in the sidewalk that you don't care about. That's right. Well, this is it. I mean, you've got all these um, groups that, that that pop up um, in in England. You had um, at the same time as what was going on in the states last year. Last summer, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, you know, you had the Black Lives Matter. Over here, you had um, Topple the Racists. I don't know if you've uh, you, you've heard of those. I think you had a, a similar group over in the States where they were pulling down the statues and things. Um, you know, the Confederate statues were all coming down. Um, over here, you know, they were targeting statues, um, you know, old slave owners and, and and or people that were connected to the to the slave trade. These are back in the 18th century. These statues have been up for over 100 years, you know. And um, uh, around where I live, um, this is my kind of personal story of it. Um, we got wind, uh, myself and a group of other historians, like locally, that um, they were going to pull down a statue of Oliver Cromwell in Warrington. Uh, they were doing a Black Lives Matter march. I just want to um, say that guy made $3.2 million in the U.S. alone, and that was after right, buying his estate right. and binging on four high-end homes. So I just right. I had to look I had to look that up to make sure I got yeah, that right. So, we, so, so he's the leader. He, he was the guy that started the movie. He's the guy that created it. All right, right. So, yeah, they were going to pull down this, this statue, this Oliver Cromwell statue. This is last summer, uh, 2020. Um, and so there was this Black Lives Matter march. There was, um, and embedded in, in this march was Topple the Statue Group or whatever, Topple the Racist, they were called, I think. Uh, they have a website, or they did have. Uh, and they were going to pull down this Oliver Cromwell statue. Now, Ol Oliver Cromwell was a guy that, that um, he, he was actually against slavery. Um, I mean, he, he cancelled the, the Royal Charter um, that, that uh, allowed slavery, basically, the, uh, you know, the, the slave trade. Um, so why, why they were going to pull down the statue of Oliver Cromwell, I really don't know. So all, all these local historians were, were kind of in contact with each other. And they said, right, well, let's, let's form a ring around, around this Oliver Cromwell statue. Um, so, um, and, and it was happening on a Saturday, apparently. Um, so um, I, by the time I went down there, I'd missed it. It was all over. But, but uh, the statue was, was completely bypassed. And uh, I think one of the reasons why was because a lot of these right wing guys, um, kind of like Brexiteer type guys, uh, were also surrounding um, like an epitaph statue like um um uh, world war one world war two commemorative um area and um so the the black lives matter march i think got completely dispersed and and uh nothing happened but it, it was quite strange that um i met a group of uh, the historians there that were still hanging around and they 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 were kind of getting friendly with these right wing guys you know um, these 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 Brexiteers and and so it was all a bit of a mismatch and a bit strange and um, anyway the Oliver Cromwell statue is still standing that's still there. Well, um, we have a lot of strawmen. We have a lot of strawmen right now, like people that we mm. can burn down and people we can attack, but we don't have any saviors because with every devil there's a Jesus, and everyone mm. needs that one Jesus that pulls them out of the fire and brings them to this thing of sanctity, and then they'll build a statue after them, and that'll be the leader of whoever that was. But I feel like ha why, why don't we try a change and just make everyone the savior? Why don't we make everyone, every little bit, every person? It's not one person that gets a movement done. It's the groups that they form. It's the people that they lead into these charges and battles that, you know, this the troops. It's all these types of situations that are created amongst the people. Not just one person, but one person has to be remembered or one person has to be the main frontier of this thing, even though the people are doing all of the work. And I look at it like if you don't understand government tactics or you don't understand manipulation or secret methods of warfare or whatever you want to call it, just look up agent of provocateurs. Those are people that are hired to go into a situation, cause up animosity and disturbance so the government can step in. 
Same thing that happened with these Black Lives Matter protests I've talked about a couple of times. The guy with the yellow umbrella that was just walking by and hitting shop windows with a hammer, and everyone's like, what are you doing? The reporter's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Person didn't even answer, kept on going. Because you've opened up the door to chaos, and they're waiting for you to get violent so they can step in. That's a factor of it. Maybe it's a factor of why did the John Lennon or the uh, Jimi Hendrix statue, why did those two musician statues get spray painted and and, uh, beaten or uh, kind of torn apart a little bit? Because you've opened up the door for chaos and now everyone wants to partake in chaos. It's like the purge. They let you do it one night a year, then everyone gets to experience that. You notice how it's the wealthy people that want to isolate themselves from everybody because they have the money to be able to do so. And the people that don't have the money to do so have to either get involved or get out of the fucking way. That's it's it's this weird kind of like strategical thing and i start to notice that like i don't think it was intended to cause all this but i think they don't really care higher elites whatever wealth corporate elites whatever you want to call it because they have money to be able to make sure that they don't ever get to see this type of stuff you know what i mean it start to look at like they're not at the ground level it's like they live in a bubble don't they yes they're, they're not kind of um even connected to this you know um but isn't that they... fascinating to you that you can like I'm so glad we're talking about this. I don't know if you're just entertaining me, but I'm looking at this like every time I try and talk about something like this, there's people that go, you're a conspiracy person. I'm like, is it that crazy to think that someone is going to manipulate your mind to be able to get something that they want to cross? How many times has that happened in the world? How many movies have we seen where a guy tells a girl she's beautiful, that she's going to marry her, he's going to do all these types of things, and then ends up leaving after they slept together? It happens so, and that's not an example for people to be like, oh, that's why men are bad. No, it happens the other way too. You get what you want out of something and then you go on forward. The same reason why the only reason to do like a podcast of mine for the first time without knowing me is to promote something. And then you end up developing a relationship and it goes from there. But you need something. You need, that's so everyone needs something. I need something. You need something. We all fucking need something from somebody. And I'm like, God, I don't know how to shift that. Mm, that's true <clears throat> yeah yeah that's very true the the um going going back to the statue thing the um and with when well, it crosses over to freemasonry the uh, attacked um uh pulled down the albert pike um statue in uh, dc uh you probably saw the pictures of that uh spray painted it pulled it down and uh i mean he, he was connected to um the confederacy at, at, at you know some stage in his life during the Civil War, and and um, but he kind of moved on from that, and and um, you know, it it it. I think he probably regretted that in a way, um, because he was um, he assisted in uh, Prince Hall Masonry, uh, and uh, um, you know, he'd moved on, but but he still was the statue was still a target because obviously his his uh, Confederacy connections. But yeah, they pulled that down, uh, spray painted it, and everything. And and um, but I think it's now on display within the temple itself, the uh, the Scottish Rite Temple. Um, so it's they've moved it inside rather than outside, you know, uh, where it, where it was. But yeah, yeah, you know, the um, that that was an easy target, really, you know, because it wasn't just a conspir a, a, a Confederacy um, commander. At, at, some point but he was also a freemason you know so that was a double whammy for albert pike really well it's Um, like everyone's scared about china and the states a lot because they're like what's going to happen over there i I was like everyone should really be scared a little bit they kind of dominate the market in a certain way but to be able to shift the power because somehow for our country your country everybody's country that goes and tries to trade with china they've kind of locked down the market where we need their goods and we're more than willing to pay and pay and pay no matter if they jack up the price because they we've became addicted to their services or we became addicted to their materials that they make for us yeah. the only way well, to fix- close our factories down um you know and um gave everything to china and and um so everything's produced there uh, with the original idea oh yeah it'd be, dead, be dead cheap from china ah oh, great stuff but it, it doesn't take a genius to work out, well, yeah, but they've got control of the market then, you know. So eventually, you know, they, they could up the prices and, and you know, kind of uh, we're, yeah. in, we're, we're in the situation where it's going now, you know. 
Well, the multiple um, route ways that we could take is that we build our own factories and do as much as it possibly takes to get that going to where we can be more sustainable as our own countries and not have to worry about another ones, which any country I would think logically would be able to do. But the only other thing I can see is that if everyone just – if they get too much exposure. I mean there's so many cases that happen over there of just the worst possible conditions that are against the human ethical code, and it's not putting blame on China. That's just how – that that's how their government works. It's not the people there. It's the government because um, in a lot of ways, China is better than the states. I've heard uh, – or North Korea, for instance, as – Horrible stuff that happens over there. I've heard too many defectors talk about how if somebody's getting mugged in the streets, everyone will come up and break apart the mugging. They'll 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 stand by you because they don't let that happen. They don't let the people abuse the people. They understand the abuse from the government, but they never fight amongst each other and that sort. They don't have the time or effort to be able to do so. And over here, it happens constantly. People are constantly getting robbed. You know, it happens in the UK as well too. It happens everywhere. I think the easiest thing that you can do, a root way to take, is to expose all the horrible human ethical things that happen over there and then just refuse to trade. So eventually they're going to look for any price just to be able to get some money out of some stuff that they've created. But we've let them jack it up and jack it up and jack it up. And it, it, it's crazy because I don't want to push the blame on them, but I also think with that Yuri video where he talks about the explosion, uh, ta uh, explosional tactics, manipulational tactics of the KGB that they use, which is a 20-year process, you start going, fuck, man, maybe this is a – this is a chain of effects that are happening to the world where maybe this chaos is caused by our own governments, but also by other governments as well, too. And it's like nobody really cared about our mental well-being if we're if they're not physically abusing us. Sure. But if they can mentally abuse us, that's something completely different. Mm. Which reminds me, I, I was watching this great documentary right a couple of days ago, and you've probably heard about this. Um, I'm, I'm sure. You've, you've discussed this before on one of your podcasts because um, I did listen to a few of your podcasts. Um, and, right. um, but it was basically the CIA, right? And they were heavily involved in the 1970s and 1980s in uh, a project um, called Remote Viewing. Have you, have you heard about it? Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's, um, it's off the movie Men Who Stare at Goats with George Clooney. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you discussed it sometime in one of your pod, in one of your podcasts. Just recently, um, too. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it it was it was fascinating because it was it's true it, it's true what you know what happened what they did uh, the the amount of money that they pumped into this remote viewing. Um, there was a guy from New York. Um, I've forgotten his name now. Um, Indigo something or other. Indigo Swan. Indigo Swan. I might have got the name wrong, but um, uh, he was like an artist um, and he was one of their best subjects at this remote viewing. And um, he was he was with the program for a while. It, it's a fascinating documentary, it really is, you know. And uh, um, so, yeah, they've, even the CIA, you know, they've they've kind of nurtured and developed this culture of um of kind of alternative um kind of magic uh programs you know it's it's amazing um so i was i was watching that for a while you know and, and skipping through youtube ch checking out different documentaries on it and, and 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 things like that it was great there's a joe rogan um, podcast i have, you should probably watch off to send it to you afterwards but it's with mike baker right. he's, he's an ex-cia ex agent and um, he, this is where like a lot of this stuff, like the Yuri video came into play. He started talking about that, but he was talking about like mm. the, the link of it with the UFOs and all this type of stuff. Now this could be government tech, you know, nope. They don't just, if that would have popped up in the 1940s when the first UFO or first thing ever happened, they don't just stop researching a national threat of that sort. They keep doing mm. it. And the mm. fact that the government hasn't came out about a team that's specifically designed to watch these things, there's no giant, uh, I guess, exposure of a space force or not the NASA one, but a different one, like an actual alien men in black style thing. There's no talk about that. 
mm. people go, well, this is a new thing. Well, no, this has been, they, they had to keep researching into it. They always keep, they never just stop doing something. Russia just picked back up their fucking psychological warriors project, which led into the remote viewing and stuff like that. We had yeah, CIA yeah. agents. Yeah. Yeah find out that they were studying using psychological warriors to drop into battles and then we started doing it and that's what created the movie men who stare goats that's what had that whole entire that's experiment right. Right. we shut it down yeah. yeah well we it shut was... it down because it was ridiculous and then now they're picking it back up where we go maybe we should start picking it back up because there's this whole idea of psychic things that are now entering the world again where people are like mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. psychics are more normal maybe it's 5g i have no clue but you start to look at these examinations of maybe it's wrong information. Maybe we're going off information right now, not me and you, but the world is going off information that could be wrong. And we've just been going on it so much since to where when you see the clear visage, you start to get like Alex Jones, for instance, talked about chimeras, these like sheep goat hybrid things, mm. fucking China, I think, <laughs> cloned their first goat or whatever, their first chimera in like, what, 19, no, no, was it, was it 1994 or something like that? Do you think they just stopped cloning? Do you think that that's a, anything? If I would, if the states would have cloned something, you think they just stop after one? Really? They're going to keep going and try and perfect that machine. You start to look at like the things that they tell you, if you gloss back over it, you're like, you didn't just fucking stop. Even Mike Baker from the CIA goes, you think they just stopped doing something like that? They keep going, but you don't ever hear about it. And I'm like, that's coming from a guy who works in the CIA and right now is working for the NSA. So I'm like, hey, man, maybe that guy's giving us mi misinformation to go down a wrong rabbit hole. But I've never seen misinformation that exposes the government in that way. And that man does not like Edward Snowden. And Snowden's the one that exposed all this social dilemma stuff where the documentary came out showing that they track you using your data and they sell your data. Mm -hmm. This whole AI generation that we're entering in is really going to fuck with a lot of people. Like, I don't think people realize how dangerous this is getting. And maybe I'm kind of scared on the aspect. And this is why I'm all hysteric. But I look at a concept like when the Internet went down or not Internet, Facebook and Instagram went down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. Did, did that not scare the <clears throat> shit out of a lot of people like, man, how many people do I talk to on social media? I don't have their phone number, so I have no way to contact them. Guess That's I better right. wait for yeah. it to come back on. You start to realize you've let this delicacy become a requirement into your life where now, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have those people's numbers, you lost contact with them. You might know their address to send them a letter, but you don't have their phone numbers. You have their That's social right. media That's profile. Right. That's right. No, need me back. Back in the day, back in my day, when, when we used to go to nightclubs, pubs and nightclubs in the late 80s, 90s, uh, you know, bef before the internet, before Facebook, before social media, uh, you met a girl in a nightclub, you know, <laughs> she'd, she'd, she'd scribble a number down in lipstick on a on a bear mat. I don't know if you have bear mats in the state, you know, those those little cardboard things Coasters, where you put yeah. the pipe down. And or whatever, whatever you could get, you know, or sometimes she'd, she'd put a number down on your, on your arm, you know. Uh, your phone, her phone number, and you get, get smudged in the morning. You think, oh no, oh no, she was gorgeous that girl. I lost the last like, four digits. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was it was hard work because if, even if you did remember the number or you or you did get the number and you and you and you phoned her up, it was the the landline number. So you know, you can guarantee that a dad was going to pick it up. You know, uh, so you had to navigate through that. And um, but kids these days have got it great you know it's like oh yeah i'm on facebook oh yeah, yeah you know and um but uh, yeah it reminded me of that because um I, I i i keep in contact with people from around the world you know selling books and things and and uh you know i know, I know people in various different countries and, and we're always having a chat whatever you know and then when facebook went and instagram went down you know um that was it you know a messenger had gone so you you know it, you couldn't get in touch with these people and it was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like it reminded me of the, the old days where you had to phone people up on the landline and, uh, you know, it's crazy. But it, it just goes to show how dependent we are on on, on Facebook. It's you know? cult programming. That's what it is. Mm. It's being in a hive yeah. mind and thinking all along the same basis to where you just say yes or no, depending on whatever option is tossed your way. Do you want the chicken or do you want the fish? 
well, I don't really want chicken or fish. Well, that's all we got. So you have to pick one. Well, then I just won't eat or I'll get peanuts. You know, I, I was listening because there's always a trending hashtag about Alex Jones was right. And I'm like, okay, so I had to listen back to some of his older stuff, like stuff that happened like three years ago. He talked about AI gods. Now we see Mark Zuckerberg that's on trial or all these types of things. Now, I don't know about that one yet because there's a random lady that popped out of nowhere that's exposing as a Facebook whistleblower. She's already verified with a blue check and has like 70,000 followers. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, so there's yeah, the C-230, yeah. which is this type of bill that uh, it kind of like limits their whatever uh, companies can do to extort your data. Now, Mark Zuckerberg is pro this thing, and this thing is supposed to put lockdowns on big tech. If you actually look into the C, whatever the C230, whatever it's called, you don't want that. Everyone's like, yes, this will stop tech from taking our data. No, it limits it to only a few companies, giant corporations that can be able to do whatever the hell they want with your data. So now it's taking, instead of a bunch of individual companies getting bits and pieces of your data, you're now leaving it to the big ones to grab all of it. And that's kind of the scary thing is, is that this movement, this person that's seen as like a whistleblower, this person that's like, yes, it's just the word whistleblower. I got fucking sucked in it too until some person exposed it. I'll have to look up the tweet that I saw that I had to fucking send to somebody. But it came out of nowhere where I was like, yeah, that word whistleblower. Whenever you hear that, you go, this is a, a person exposing a company of something bad that they did. But no, maybe you could just put that in the words of something to maybe sl- somehow get it something passed. Like um, it says right here, this person put up fascinating that the Facebook whistleblower automatically receives a verification for her just created Twitter account, as well as a nice algorithmic promotion boost to go along with the PR tour. Her handlers are orchestrating beware of officially sanctioned whistleblowers. So these are people that are accepted by the government to just be these whistleblower accounts that are exposing you to wrong information, exposing you and manipulating your mind to be able to pass something that you necessarily aren't looking into. And you don't know if you want that passed. This is very good for Mark Zuckerberg. And a lot of people are like, he's a a devil. He looks like a reptile. True. But (laughs) Yeah. This is this yeah. is scary where like I go back to Alex Jones thing. Um, he said that beware AI created gods. Think of that word AI created gods. When you create an algorithm for what let's say you own Facebook, okay? Now you decide what gets to be on your platform since it's yours. It's your mm. right to be able to do so. But now we mm. have to show you what you Let's say you don't want anybody bullying any people online. So we'll type this into the algorithm. What keywords do you want in there? Well, I like this politician. I don't like the other ones. So anybody that says anything bad about my politician, I don't want on my site. But you can delete the you can delete the other guy off of it. Okay, we'll type that into the algorithm. Now this thing is an exact replica of your mind and what your bias is. And it starts to grow. Because an algorithm constantly evolves and constantly keeps changing to where it doesn't know the limits and the boundary keeps going to where you start seeing suppression happen that necessarily might not need suppression in that area. And this is where it starts to get dangerous with censorship and all these ideas where now wrong information is allowed to be out there. Her whole Facebook whistleblower thing is that Facebook was showing you videos of things that incited more violence. When I watch uh, animals versus uh, or animals and nature's fighting each other. I didn't know a horse could beat a crocodile. That's fucking nuts. I've seen way too many videos of a horse beating up a crocodile. But a it horse ca- of a crocodile. Yeah, yeah, it stomps on its head. And I don't know if you've ever seen a horse <laughs> kick before, but that thing can crack open a skull and it can crack open a crocodile's face too. Um, this crocodile is limping off. This horse just starts stomping on its head. But that one linked me into another video about this and another video. <laughs> Next thing you know, after like four or five videos, I watched a woman crawl on a giant rock in front of a bunch of alligators in the water below and she fell and went right in there and crocodiles teared her apart. It went from a horse killing a crocodile to a crocodile killing a human to some shit i'm not even gonna mention on this show because i'm surprised i sat and watched it and that's what these algorithms do they want you to stay hooked onto the device so you they the the people running it get more money but they don't know the necessary Mm, dangers of what your kids are going to be viewing and what's going to distort Mm. your perception of your reality to be that's right well one of one of the guys that's 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 now um uh, in charge of uh, Facebook, uh, I'm not sure about his full job job description, but is it? He's an electrician. He's a media guy, uh, and is a guy called Nick Clegg, who was um, an English politician, and um, 
he was uh, Deputy Prime Minister from uh, ooh, 2010 to about 2015, I think it was. Um, and he was uh, a Liberal Democrat and he, he joined the, the Tories uh, in a coalition in 2010. And he basically lied to his to his people to, to his followers, saying, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna um, if if you vote for me, I'll I'll uh, get rid of student debt. You know, I'll 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 get rid of the student loan and and uh, yeah, you know." Uh, but he didn't do it, you know. Uh, and he had to apologise uh, to his supporters for not doing it uh, when he when he got in power. And um, uh, no surprises, he got completely voted out in 2015 and, and uh, wandered into the political wilderness, but then came back as um, some kind of heavy force in Facebook. Uh, so if you look him up uh, on Google, Nick Clegg, his name is, um, I'm not sure about his, his um, job description with Facebook, but you, you do see him lurking behind Zuckerberg sometimes, you know, in, in, uh, um, media reports and things like that. He's some kind of advisor, I think, or some kind of uh, media guy um, in regards to Facebook. But If you're so ahead he, or if you're trying to get power or you want power, what is the best thing to do once you have power? What's the best thing to do? You become friends with people that are in the eyes of the public and those people that are eyes of the public. Why was I watching Matthew McConaughey announce his unofficial running for presidency or some, something like that? You think everyone's going to be like, I'm not going to have the guy from Fast uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High on my fucking president ballot. Like, nobody wants that, but people do because they like him in the movies. It might not mean you like him as a person, you know what I mean, or his views on things. He might have some dumb fucking views. And you start to realize, like, it's coming into that movie Idiocracy with Terry Crews, man. And it's fucking nuts, dude. And I don't know. I don't think it's our fault. I think it's a a, a multitude of factors. I think we've somehow just neglected the basic functions because the easiest thing for a society to do is if it's too hard to live, you're going to be focused on just trying to keep your head afloat from water. I guarantee you right now, take a poll in your neighborhood or take a poll in your state and just ask – what's on your mind? Like, what, what do you do? I'm just trying to keep my head above water, man. I'm just trying to keep my head above water, man. That's the, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the response you'll day. get. So you stop caring <clears throat> about these types of government stuff because there's two types of people. There's people that want to be left the fuck alone and people that won't leave them the fuck alone. The people that won't leave them the fuck alone might have an easier lifestyle to where they can focus in on this type of stuff and they get sucked in. But then the people that don't want to deal with it, they just want to be like, I don't want to deal with it. I just want to go home and you know pay my bills and make sure I can survive for my family because – They've made your life so hard. They've made the world so difficult. So you can't focus in on all their fucking blemishes that they have. That's why I say you're high. It's because you're starting to kind of see this type of shit that's going on because you've, you're, you're, you're trying to find every crack to show that life isn't shit. And it's not. But they don't let you see that, man. And it's very, very hard unless you're really looking with a magnifying glass. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like there's always one crisis following another now, you know, I mean, you know, COVID and, and uh, you know, and then over in the UK, we've, we've now got like, um, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of follow on from Brexit, you know, uh, you know, this, uh, a lack of truck drivers. So there's, so there's um, no, you know, sh the, the shortages of food um, in the supermarkets and things like that. And, uh, um, you know, you, you go to the local pub and all the other the restaurant and they've got things off the menu because they've not got uh, deliveries coming in. Um, and so there's always like one crisis after another, after another, you know, and there's always something going on, you know, to keep people kind of occupied. Um, keeps you busy. Yeah. Well, this is it. This is it, you know, and in the midst of all that, you know, you just want to kind of go to work, earn the cash, pay the bills, you know, put food on the table for the kids and, and make sure everything's all right there and, and carry on as best you can, maybe sneak a holiday in if you can, you know, and um, that's that's all what people want to do, you know, they want to live the life to the best they can, but amongst all that, there's all this crap going on, you know, um, constant kind of stuff hitting you with, with something else. As soon as something else is finished, something else, you know, and, and um, yeah, it's crazy. 
crazy. It has to get over the hump of when you see another country suffering or you see another group of people. It doesn't matter if it's race, gender, whatever, suffering. You stop thinking of it as like, damn, those people are suffering. You should start looking at it like that's going to come for me if you're that. If if people, which people are selfish, you got to start looking at it. That's going to come for you. That's going to end up hurting you as well, too. You're going to be in the same group as those people. Okay, so you know how you do this? You start giving a shit. When you see one person going through trouble, instead of thinking selfishly to protect your hide, why don't you work on we're all people and we're all trying to survive together? When I see any of these groups or any of these acts go on, how many people support these people? But they're they're only doing it for the optics of how it looks. I'll see a person tweet something or retweet an article like, this is horrible. What are you fucking doing to stop it? What are you doing? Are you are you worried about it? Me talking about this, am I doing anything to expose my government? I, I try and use my cell phone as less as possible. I don't use any of the TikTok or Clubhouse apps. I try and limit my social media presence so I don't get addicted to the thing because I also know that they're tracking your data and sending it. And I know these, and I think we all agree, these phones aren't made in the best conditions. They're not made by people that are getting a nice living wage. They're made That's in right. horrible conditions. So That's you know right. you know what I can do? I can stay off TikTok. I can stay off Clubhouse that have been known to have China, the reason why TikTok was going to be banned was because their servers steal all your data because it's a China owned app. That's why we ended up creating a US TikTok app to have our data. But that means if any of you guys use TikTok, we're going to use your data. We're going to steal your information. (laughs) It's every country's doing it to each other. When people say it's Asian hate or something like this, no, it's every country. It's a power, man. People love fucking power. I don't know where it came from. I've talked to plenty of historians to be like, was there any war like that just didn't happen? There was no wars at a time period. Uh, as far as we could track, there's always been people conflicting with other tribes and all these types of things. When did it start? It went somewhere and it was bring it back to the shady car salesman that sells you a fucking lemon. That guy, the one that's like, I don't give a fuck about you. I'm going to make this money so I can feed my family. It's now seen as a preservation aspect rather than an attack. But to that person that you just sold that crappy car to that breaks down and maybe they get into a car accident, that was an attack from you, which is going to cause them to attack back. Now you got to protect yourself and now you got to attack that person. You start seeing the manipulational tactics, man. And that's what I that's what I want to focus on is like instead of acting out of emotion, think with thought. Just think things through. I've heard perspectives I would have never even thought of, some that I really appreciate. Like when I was talking about, imagine if you're driving to the same toll booth every single day, and then the one day you drive up there, you always have the 325 for the toll booth, but then it goes 350. And you're like, I don't have an extra quarter. What am I going to do? Well, you can turn around and go right back home and get another quarter. Nah, I'm going to park my car and wait for someone to give me a fucking quarter or you're going to let me through that perspective, that one that it was an option I didn't even think of doing because it was going to be so bad and it was going to mess up everyone else's day. That's not a good way. It's an asshole perspective, but it's something different. And it's like we're always given one or two options, the chicken or the fish, man. And I'm like, fuck, somebody asked for a steak. I don't care. Like I, I, I'm at that point where I'm looking at it like. And I, I, I use the hysterics for comedy, obviously, because it is a serious topic, but I don't think I'm that crazy where this isn't just it's not noticeable for a lot of people. And I think it's just because they've never they could never think that this could happen. But how many people thought Bohemian Grove couldn't be a possibility? And then that was a real thing. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's, true. Yeah, that's it's a real thing. Yeah. 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 This is it. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, it's it's. Um, it's bizarre, really, if you think about it, you know. Uh, but but there's things Black like Mirror that that go on all, yeah, they go on all around the world, you know. These kind of like secret kind of get-togethers, and there's there's, there's so many weird orders, um, magical orders, and and um, you know it's crazy. You know, the, the, there really is a lot of secret societies and a lot a lot of orders, uh, and Freemasonry, I think, is just the the more public one, you know. The, the one that people are familiar with but, but there's many many different orders um is it evil or is it just ease of access think it through is it it, it might be evil to us because these people are finding a way to manipulate the system but mm-hmm. how do we get people mm-hmm. like um bezos for instance he's going to launch william shatner in space i'm like first of all i thought you had to be like go through specific training and you had to make sure the G forces wouldn't kill you. But this guy's like, fuck it. This would be cool. Everyone likes this. And the media is like, yeah, this is a great story. It gets people's attention because people want to see Someone actors in space. Nancy as well. 
Yeah. William Shatner. Yeah. yeah. That guy's going to die. Man, Who's going to pay for that when he dies? <laughs> yeah. He looks, he looks good for 90, doesn't he? You know, I mean, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's good on him. He's still going, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's like, um, life imitating art, isn't it? Uh, William Shatner going, going up into space. It's, it's um, interesting, but I'm also not one of those people that are like, yes, we're going to see the guy from Star Trek be in space. I'm like, that dude's in his nineties. He's going to, something's going to happen. Are we looking at the medical evaluation behind this? Or is it just that much of attention and that much clicks that you're going to be like, we got to bring him into space now. We can't just back away after the doctor said he could have an aneurysm. No, we can't do that. <laughs> I just look at it like, that's what we talk about where we start entering this facade or this type of what I say is reality television, because that's what politics is. It's fascinating. It's the most fascinating reality television show I've ever seen. And I don't know, I, I I don't know why it's like that, but I guess that's what they get to get views on it. You would expect that the real shit, these hearings that happen, more people would watch. No, they just want to see Biden flub a word. They want to see Trump say something outrageous. They want to see all this type of stuff that gets these views and this attention. But I never see this type of stuff happen when it comes to a hearing. When I ask people, did you watch the Afghanistan hearing? Did you notice what the guy said where he said, now... When we pulled troops out of Afghanistan, did you did you know that they were going to crash in 11 days? You got a letter saying it was going to crash in 11 days. The guy goes, I never got a letter saying 11 days. He was very specific with 11 days. Mm. Now, now, did he get one for two weeks? Maybe, maybe he did, but you didn't say that. You said 11 days. People like they think if you get in the general area, I started learning this from that episode I told you about, I'll send you, but also from just manipulation attack like freedom of information act website it's a free site it's a government site you can search up anything and be able to find any information and help them get released or file a hearing to get it released but you have to be exact in your fucking words man you can't be off if you say that you know robbie talked to david uh, almost a year ago whatever on this podcast you have to know the date you got to know the time. I got to know what you had for breakfast. I got to know what I had for lunch. I got to know all this stuff that's unnecessary because they know if you get all those right, you know it's real. So they have to give it to you at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you would you consider going off grid at any time? You think? What I you do know what? when people said, "Oh, I'm I'm going off grid. That's it. I'm going off grid. I'm I'm getting rid of my mobile phone. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not." Deleting my internet presence. I mean, at this point, cabin in the woods. If I if I died, then they could just look at the over two thousand something, three thousand something hours of content through my show, and then create an AI from me, basically. But yeah, I, I yeah. try my best to not be on it as much as possible. I only set it. I only really use it for recording days when I have to set up a podcast or something. I hate being on it. Um, but I'm thinking about moving just out west where there's nobody around, and I don't really care houses are cheap but they're like there's no one out there i don't give that fucking talk to people anyway I, I i just do my thing i live my life and i try and make sure that i can try and find a sense of balance in this world of chaos you know yeah and I, I think yeah. that's important to do too people want to spend their whole entire lives being a social influencer i don't have the hours or minutes to be able to consume my life that way never i never yeah. want to do that so i saw one of your podcasts it was it was, it was great it was uh some guy wearing a mask and oh, that's a while like, ago um, six 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 does like yeah 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 he does like horror reviews and things like that on youtube Reese, he's got uh, a channel oh, god i'm gonna it's Re Reza, Re damn it i forgot how he pronounces his name that's um yeah, yeah. Uh, reza or risa i think his name is sorry mm. if i messed that up buddy and he's, and he's and he's got this mask on and, he, and he's kind of like well into his horror films and and things yeah. like this and uh yeah, yeah, it was great that one. Yeah, and he he was like wearing this mask because I'm I don't know if I'm right on this, but obviously he was you know trying to stay, you know, keep his um, anonymity and you know and and um, but it was great. I, I thought I thought it was great because he was he'd obviously got this thing going on YouTube, this channel going, and uh, but no one knew who he was, you know, and um, yeah, yeah, it was cool. That was that's that's nice. There's an artistic quality about that that, that that I liked really. 
that's yeah. all I ever like wanted it. out of this thing was to meet new people and also maybe expose some people. And I don't even have that. I mean, I have an okay platform, but it's nothing like a Joe Rogan or something like that, but it's out there. It's a way of giving you the time of day to be able to talk about these types of things. And I think that's, what's important. I think there's a lot of people like yourself doing amazing things that need exposure, but what do we always see? The algorithm sets it to see the same thing over and over and over again. If you watch one Matthew McConaughey right. video, yeah. you're getting constant yeah. Matthew McConaughey videos you don't get related to matthew mcconaughey you just get mcconaughey 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 and i fucking don't want to see that guy anymore mm, yeah that's true you you kind of like fighting the battle all the time with with the, the algorithms and the uh um you know it's it, it's like with with the youtube you know you need a thousand followers but on top of that you need like is it about four thousand hours you need like watched, a doesn't? yeah. You need like four thousand hours watched, and then you need to get like a. I think it's a thousand subscribers. I don't have the subscribers, yeah. but I have the hours watched. So I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's whatever. I think I think they reset <laughs> it every like year too. You, you've got to get through, and and then you've got the uh, the algorithms to to kind of fight with, and so there's a lot going against you, really. You know, it's. Well, the it's, way the world works is that once you get success, it's easier to keep obtaining more success, but then. The yeah, hardest yeah, thing yeah, is yeah. to get to that point to where you yeah, break yeah. through it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. And this is why with, with like Freemasonry, for example, using that as an example, uh, as, as a model, um, in my case, when I write books about Freemasonry, my first book that came out, which was about 11 years ago, 12 years ago now, something like that, um, that just kind of um, got sneaked onto the bestsellers list mainly because um at that time there was thousands and thousands of masons that that would would buy it you know that, that wanted to buy it and and so it was in that that that, that group that contained group so out, outside of freemasonry you know um i'm not really that that well known at all but within freemasonry within that contained group that model if you like um it's it sells quite well you know um so each book I've, I've, I've had out has, has sold quite well but it's within that group and uh, suppose it's like someone that, that, that writes about fly fishing for, for example and and they kind of work within the, the 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 fly fishing group which is probably smaller but you know it's um and and you do get these kind of contained groups i've noticed with 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 youtube like for example uh, there's um the bigfoot group for example um people that are into bigfoot um, which is quite a massive group in America, you know, and, and people do a book on Bigfoot or do a, a YouTube channel on Bigfoot. And it's, and it's, and it, and it works quite well because it works within this group, this, this contained group. And, um, sports is like another one. It's know. like flat earth videos. My buddy has a video. Yeah, yeah, talk, right. My buddy has, uh, <laughs> less views on his videos, but he has a flat earth person on there and his video in three days gets like 10,000 views. And then I have an astrophysicist telling you why it's not flat. And then it only, that only gets a few views because no one likes the science. They yeah. want mystery. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is why science is, is taking a battering at the moment because, because people with, with science, it's hard to get your head around it. If, if you've not got that scientific mind, you know, it, you know, the, um, all that kind of, um, you know, stuff, the scientific well, academic voodoo stuff. shit is so much fun compared to like fucking laws of physics, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You could yeah, stab you a know. doll and hurt somebody rather than watching a brick fall into a trampoline. It doesn't make any sense. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, you kind of get your head around gravity. Uh, and and the mathematical equations and all, all 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 this kind of stuff it's so hard you know if 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 you're not into that if if you've not got that scientific mind but then you can watch a video about about flat earth and say oh yeah oh yeah you know and they love it the mystery you know the the the, the kind of um the world's going to shit <laughs> <laughs> you know and and with with with, with free coming back to freemasonry you know you you know, people think, oh, well, yeah, they, they might be just kind of, uh, you know, playing bowls on a Saturday night or whatever. But then again, they might not. They might be locked in a room doing a ritual, uh, you know, doing, doing some kind of weird stuff, you know. Um, You're going to make my theory come true that they're going to start burning down Freemason lodges if you say that. <laughs> yeah, people think it. I heard them say it. Well, it's happening now because wasn't there some guy in Canada that, that burnt down about three 
um, Masonic temples in somewhere. Oh, Alberta I don't or know. Something like that. The, per- the Pope is on everyone's fucking hit list at this point now. <laughs> they raided it's the crazy. Vatican again. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. The craziness. I love how we went from <laughs> we went from airplane crashes to fucking political elites and Illuminati. That was that was great. Um, they, hey man, you gave me enough <laughs> of your time, dude. Uh, where, you know, where can people see your books? Um, I'd like to have you back on again too. Maybe start off the a thousand episodes right. You know, get with some real corporate. Yeah, yeah, talk. yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do it. So it, it's always a pleasure. Always, always great to do these things, you know, and um, uh, just just let it flow. But yeah, again, just go on Google, type in Dr. David Harrison, Freemasonry books. They'll come up. Something will come up. <laughs> Something. So, uh, Illuminati episode from Out of the Blank will pop yeah. up. <laughs> well, thanks for yeah, listening to this yeah. episode of Out of the Blank. Stay tuned for next episode.